Well, hey y'all, it's Kirsten with The Wooden Butterfly where we're all about the transformation. And today we are transforming some side tables into nightstands. So we did a few things in this guest bedroom a while back when my son moved out for college. It was kind of a healing process for me to kind of freshen up the space and make it nice and fresh and new when he came, did come back home. But now he is married and off uh, living in another state. So we are um, going to do a little freshening up because he is coming with his wife to stay for about a week. And we, I thought there's a few pieces in there that I had started, but didn't quite hit the mark. So we're going to redo those today. I redid the dresser last week. So go back and look at that video. It was super fun. And then we're going to work on the nightstands that will go with the bedroom set. So the headboard I did a while ago, painted it navy blue, and now we will um, work on the nightstands. So it's going to be fun. We're going to be doing working on the sprayer, and then I'm going to show you how I kind of put the whole space back together again. Come on, y'all. Let's have some fun. So as you can see, these are completely different heights. We need to level these out. So the first thing that I did was I cut off those little tips that were at the end of at the bottom of the larger table. Then we're going to go ahead and we're going to give it a good cleaning. I got my white lightning out, give it a good scrub, and then rinse it down with clear water and wipe off all the residue from the cleaner and any excess, you know, goop and whatnot that was <laughs> generated when you started scrubbing and cleaning. Another way to level this out is we're going to make this one a little taller. So I'm adding an 18 inch wood round that I got from Lowe's and I'm going to glue it first and then we're going to go ahead and we're going to screw it into place. With just a few wood screws, we fasten that top to the wood round. Then I'm just removing any of the excess glue that may have squeezed out. And now it's time to paint. Even though these had been painted with some chalk paint, or started to anyways, they were two different colors. They weren't completely done. So I am just going to give them a coat of primer so that we have just even surface because these girls are going to be white, which I know is not something normal for me, but I think it's going to look really pretty. I start with the tables inverted so that I get all of the areas that you wouldn't necessarily see and the, paint, the sprayer wouldn't get to once it is tipped upright. But then it just casts a shadow if you don't hit them. So it's just, <laughs> just easier if you go ahead, tip them upside down, and go ahead and give them a spray everywhere. It also, like if you, for example, were using these pieces to sell, when you go and put them in someone's car, the worst thing to happen is to flip it upside down and it just looks absolutely ugly underneath. So just clean the whole thing, make it look like it was professionally painted from the factory. I am using my Flexia, Wagner Flexio 5000. It works great. Um, when it's really hot, it has a tendency to get clogged up at the nozzle. So I'm using the bin, the Zinzer Bin 123, which is a water-based primer, and that is what was it was clogging in the in the nozzle because the air that blows through the sprayer gets really hot when it's baking in the sun 
So if you have a garage or you have a closed-in area that you could do this, um, it definitely would work out much better. I was just dealing with some extreme elements. I am in North Florida and it gets so really hot here. So um, this took me a little longer than expected. I typically could have gotten these done all in one day, but um, the elements just were just were working against me. So that's okay. We just took another day or two because I also, as you'll see, I used a type of paint that has a very long dry time on top of this as well. After they were inverted, I flipped them over and then you're going to do the other side. Just making sure that we get the primer on everything. And it's especially good to prime that raw wood. You'll see the, uh, the tannins from the woods come pulling through. So it definitely is a good idea to put that primer on the raw wood. Then after the primer has dried, you're going to give it a good sand with 220 grit sandpaper. It's just to give the paint a little tooth for the next coat to adhere to, as well as, you know, any dust or even sometimes some wood, um, the, the pores of the wood will open up and, and give you a little bit rough finish. So you just want to sand those off. So we're using Benjamin Moore Advance and we're using the color white. Now this has a 16 hour dry time between coats. It's after four hours it's dry to the touch, but you can't, they're not recommending you reapply till after 16 hours. So I went ahead, did one coat one day, then let it sit overnight and then just did the second coat just to be safe. Now the advance did not clog up in the nozzle because it, like I said, it has that longer dry time. It is an Elkid paint that it has oil-based properties, but is a water-based paint. It will dry to a really nice hard finish, like an oil base, but it is a water-based product, so it's super easy to clean up. When you're spraying, you want to stay about six inches off of the surface and you just want to use slow, even strokes and you want to, when you're on a flat surface, you want to overlap the passes. On these underneath legs, you just want to, they're 3D, so you got to get to every angle. The great thing about this sprayer is it can be tipped diagonally as well as long as you go ahead and tip the nozzle on the inside of the cup towards the, the nozzle, then it lays down um, horizontally really well. Now while those are drying, we're going to go ahead and I'm going to give a couple of the pieces that were in the room before a little makeover so they just fit a little better so I picked up some this gold rust-oleum metallic paint it's really pretty it's quite a it's kind of a bronzy gold but it'll be a, just a nice softer kind of gold it's not a super harsh gold so I think it will look nice with the navy blue I also had these frames that um, is going to get some artwork put in it and I thought well I'll give them a coat of paint as well. Now this is what they look like before and here's the nightstands now. What do y'all think? You think, you think they look much better? I know I do. This little one was particle board and the other one is all wood but now I think they look like a coordinated set. They're not perfect, but I think they work perfect in this room.
Now let me show you how I put it together. So I hung, there's those frames that I was painting. When I brought them in, it was just, there was too much gold, so I had to add a little navy blue to it as well, and then just pop the artwork in there. The artwork is a transfer that's on wood, so that's why I didn't use the glass. And now we'll just fluff up that comforter. Haven't quite found a duvet that duvet cover that I like, so well, that's in my price range anyways. So when we find that, we'll we'll get that. I did pick up these pillow covers. They were only at just a few dollars at Walmart. I'm really impressed. The quality was quite nice. Then we'll just pop on our throw pillows. I may have one too many, but I think it looks pretty. This throw is also from Walmart and I was, gosh, the selection was really good. It is super, super soft. And that's what they look like in place. So we'll just pop in that lamp that we painted, add a few fresh flowers, And I think it's almost ready for our guests to come. I picked up some faux orchids and popped them in this pot that I picked up from Marshall's. And I think it adds just the right amount of femininity with the masculine blue and white. Now remember that dresser that I painted last week? Well, here it is. Let's go ahead and make her pretty as well. I need to get a light, a socket cover over there for the light switch. So I got to remind myself, make myself a list. But I think she's all ready. Like I said, small room, but packs a lot of punch. Well, I think it came out quite nicely. So what do you think? It's kind of put together best as I can at the moment. I would like to do a little something over on this side where the babies are, but that'll be for another day. I think maybe shelf or something, but it has to be super secure and it has to be something they're not going to pull down. Because especially my grandson, he likes to rock that <laughs> like the rock that back and forth. So we need something super stable. So as you probably can tell, if you've seen any of my other videos, I love color, but this particular project just needed a basic white and I think that was the perfect touch to this room. I think it kind of really actually helped pull everything together, helped the eye rest a little bit because I think these tables are darling all on their own but then that white just just added that extra little, I think they almost make them look a little more feminine and that's what I was, I didn't want this room to be super masculine but I didn't want it to be super feminine either. So now we're all ready for our guests, but I need your help for next week's video. I'll be redoing this vintage table in chairs, but I need your help. Which would you pick, A or B, to cover the cushions of these chairs? Let me know in the comments below, which would you pick, A or B? If you've liked this video, go ahead and hit subscribe, hit the notification bell, and hit a like because that's what helps this little channel grow.